So, you know, you get to a certain point in life where <laughs> you don't want to travel right. the world, you just want one place to anchor. So I figure if I'm going to anchor here, I might as well put everything in a nice, right, orderly way. Here's right. the here's the best shot, is uh, right here. Okay. Hey, that's a 40 foot wide hangar door. This is all pavers and paved area that comes this way, which is north toward the water we'll walk out to in a minute and I'll show you. This is another view of the same thing. Okay. This 40 foot wide door opens up and everything under there is sort of into the side of a cliff. You'll see the terrain out there. This level is ground level. It's called, the, it's called I, I affectionately refer to it as the bat cave. Okay. <laughs> the man cave is up here, the bat cave is down here. <laughs> so the icon just slide right so in there. The my icon slides in here. Maureen's going to have a, a weather system right here, ironically, right here at the counter. Okay. Wind speed and direction, and so she can radio me from her VHF radio if she's not with me, yeah. and I'll be able to get. I'll also have a windsock out on the out on the ramp. I'll show you a copy of the ramp. Okay. Uh, yesterday we spent time with the Department of Environmental Protection, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and the Army Corps of Engineers. It's crazy what you have to do. Right? Yeah. And we're getting permitted to take the plane. Uh, it, 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 what? I got this monster to build, and it's going to be significant. How many square feet is it? Oh, golly. I, uh, well over 45 feet altogether. If, if I put a concrete ramp in, sand will, if I've got a cross current, and I do, sand will build up on one side of it, then there'll be a void on the other side of it, and you mm -hmm. create a little inlet or a gully or a culvert of sorts and uh, they don't want that they don't want you doing that so I said well let's put holes through the concrete ramp with big PVC pipes to allow the flow of the currents okay That's can cool. do but then we came up with a even better idea and you can see the effect of the water yeah and that's minimal disruption or uh, interference with existing okay and it's strong enough material to allow the aircraft to roll up. So we, the aircraft is about six, 5.8 feet, six feet wheel to wheel on the sides. So we're gonna have about an eight foot wide ramp and a big illuminated line down the middle and it'll allow uh, the aircraft to come up out of the water. This ramp will go out into the water 85 feet out there and we have poles out there to show it. Uh, when we get out there. I got in this deal nine years ago. Okay. I was visiting Julian McLean. So you had this plane for nine years? No, oh. I had a deposit on the plane for nine years. Oh, uh, okay. I was visiting Julian McQueen at Industry Jet Center. Okay. He turns around and hears me talking about wanting to get back into it. And of course, at the time I was the county commissioner and blah, 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 preoccupied with stuff. But someday, when I get all this stuff <laughs> behind me, I want to go flying again. So uh, it was about, yeah, it was about nine years ago. So um, I'm talking to him, he says, let me have your debit card for a second. I just want to get something for you. Oh, he knew I wanted a small, uh, in fact, he got me that model on my oh, dining room table. He says, you want that model on dining? Yeah. So he goes down and alleges he's getting the model from my uh, dining table. I never paid for that model. Instead, I get a receipt back from him 10 minutes later and the debit card with a deduction of $5,000 towards a deposit on the airplane. That's hilarious. He says, if you don't buy the plane, I'm gonna. <laughs> I said, but yeah, I've heard you talking about it long enough, so that's it. That's your plane. So my position, they called it position number. Okay. Position number 377. Okay. A year later, six, eight months later, he says, yeah, you think I'm going to get one too. Okay. So his number was 420 something. Mine's 377. And I'm saying, how the heck am I going to ever get this plane before I'm old and gray? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he said, because, he says, so let me, let me um, uh, uh, get on this list where you can buy the plane in advance and as they come off the assembly line, if the person ahead of you in position doesn't want it, then you have the option to take it. Wow. But I had to pay cash up front 
for a plane I then leased back to them. Okay. To give them the ability to use it 80% of the time. So, okay. I cut funnel into Which there. Okay. I hit the ramp there. The ramp takes me up here. And the and the, uh, <laughs> the hanger becomes the bat cave. That's you know, great. Batman and Robin? Yeah. <laughs> There's the bat cave right there. Oh and my the goodness. The bat is going to be built into the side of the cliff, and we're going to camouflage it. Uh -huh. So it's like a bat cave, like Batman and Robin. That's amazing. And then, that's it when I talked about the lift, uh -huh. there'll be a side, there'll be an elevator to go up inside to the man cave upstairs, or you can take a staircase up to it on the a secondary access either. It's, it's gonna be crazy, be man. That's Aviator's dream. Oh my God, I've been waiting for this all my life. Just yeah. This is a good example. See how the winds are pushing left to right across us now? Yeah. Well, if I got a ramp, a ramp going out there that's perpendicular, I'm gonna have a navigation problem on higher, if it got any worse than this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I would do if I didn't feel comfortable uh, the, uh, taking cave. the ramp yeah. is I would, uh, Quickly, you turn around into my floating dock okay. and just drive my nose right into the floating dock and okay. tie it up there and let it float there. Okay. So I got two airports out on the horizon there that can land it if I had a real problem. Yeah. Ferguson, Jackie, the Ferguson is literally right uh, one o'clock off dead center and uh, more hard uh, nine o'clock to my, which is west, is uh, Jack Edwards. Jack right. Edwards. I took off from here. Seven and a half minutes later, I was in my landing landing procedures for Jack oh Edwards. <laughs> you could, I was going through takeoff procedures as soon as I was got there with the takeoff, because I was already into, into my landing procedure. Smoke our cigar and That's pretend it. we're important. <laughs> Smoke our cigar and That's pretend it. we're important. <laughs> planning and breaking ground on everything related to water activity uh, in six weeks. It's the second two weeks after Labor Day. Okay. So this is the neighbor's lot, and this was a decking arrangement that went out over here. And so you can see the natural feel here. Yeah. This indentation in the cliff compared to my property next door yeah. makes it less labor and less cost to just expand upon this in excavating it to get the 40 foot wide uh, hangar door down there. Mm -hmm. So you're coming up out of the water, it hits a staging area, a washdown area. Then right about where that palm tree is, that palm tree will be coming out. We'll, uh, more down on the ground will become a 40 foot wide hangar door. And all of this is all, three sides will all be concrete built into the earth. Okay. No windows per se, but it's in an atrium effect because the roof of the man cave is the same roof of the uh, of the hangar okay. so it's a double atrium effect so I have spotlights shooting down on it it'll be those epoxy high gloss floors you can eat off of in a hangar <laughs> that's what I'm doing it's gonna be it's gonna be something that's cool, I'm, I'm excited just talking to yeah. you about it thing is to have my own easy efficient way of managing the um, Inspection and renewal, sort of recertification activities. Once you get it here, you're gonna need the that. Aircraft. Yeah, absolutely. That's gonna be cool. So it'll be good. Well, that's outstanding, man. I am excited.